Hello, this is Mark Cashman from Microsoft. I'm a senior product manager who focuses a lot on SharePoint and a lot of the things that are built on SharePoint and a lot of the things that SharePoint helps power in other applications. And one of those other applications that's squarely built on top of SharePoint is Microsoft Lists. And now that we've also moved one of our technologies, Microsoft Stream, onto SharePoint, there's some great integration between Microsoft Lists and Microsoft Stream with the glue bean on SharePoint. And this is really the value of watching and sharing videos or audio files in a really easy way. And something as simple as the name hopefully implies, playlists. Playlists are effectively a list template that when you use them, it then asks you which videos or which audio files do you want to play and then automatically uses the template to put it into a playback format that's really easy to share and of course it's easy to update so that you can make your playlist look like you want. And I've got one tip in there to show you how you can work with ordering. Playlists are now a new template within Microsoft 365. Microsoft Lists also has an entry point from Stream that I will show you. And with that, let's get into seeing the product. So just for fun, because there's a number of entry points where you can create lists or where you can create them from, I'm going to start from the Microsoft 365 app, also known as Microsoft365.com and formerly known as Office.com or the Office365.com homepage. Um, but moving forward, we're really focused on this being your entry point when you want to log into Microsoft 365 and jump through an, to a, no, a number of different apps, a great create experience, or just to see what you most recently worked on and jump right back into getting to that last or recent work. So from here, I'm gonna show you the create experience. If I go to create, if you notice, you get kind of the what do you wanna create, and you'll see lists. And if I click on that, it'll jump me right into the list create experience. And just to get to the chase, we're going to choose and pick the playlist template that's now among all of the variety of templates and of course different methods that you can create a list from blank, from Excel, of course using one of the out-of-box templates from Microsoft or even your own custom templates. But the newest one that we're here to talk about is playlist. You get a peek ahead and this is really the structure of the list itself. You'll see that once I create it and add files, there's actually a unique user interface that's really nice for playback, as you would expect, so that you can click from one video or audio file to the next within the playlist, but right there in line to watch the video. But you get a, play, a, a little glance ahead of what the playlist list template will do. And when you go to use this template, you give it a name and we'll just do this one playlist for Mark and I have a favorite color green and since we're getting artful with our playlists we'll put it into the color palette here. Now I can save it to my list. I can also put it into any of these communities that I belong to and just for fun I'll put it into the intro zone because that's a space that I own and, and feel comfortable demoing in but also where I might want to put this playlist as far as where it plays back from. The important thing here anytime you put a list anywhere is it helps define who has access to this list once you create it. If you want this list to be more broadly available, put it into a space like a communication site or a broadly accessible team site. If you put it into your My List space, just know that you're going to have to give out the capabilities for people to view the playlist, effectively approving each person that you want to send it to. So be mindful of, of who needs access or who you want to have access in the end. Because this is a demo, I don't need to show it on the site navigation, and I'm just going to create it. A little different from how lists get created is this really jumps you into asking you what files do you want to add to this playlist. So we're going to add a new item. Since I've got a few files in my OneDrive, I'm going to jump into my files, and I've got a folder here that just has a number of different uh, case study videos, and I'm just going to bring them all in and you'll see exactly what the playlist template does. I've got six files here. Each of them are you know, roughly five minutes. They're already in the service. And when I select them, the template is gonna parse out the video file and what's in the video. All of them you know, have their own uh, video, have their own title and whatnot. And you can see some are pretty clear. You get a thumbnail. And if I click from one to the other, of course, as you would expect, loads up the video file, automatically starts playing. 
I get full access to different things that might be happening with this video, information about it, how many people have watched it over time, and a little bit more information. I could also add chapters. If there were chapters already, those would automatically show up. And overall, the playback experience is exactly what Stream supports. And the playback player gives me all the functionality of what I want to do with noise suppression, playback speed, any of the other capabilities that are available to me. And of course, I can always go full screen. When I come out of full screen, I'll be right back into the playlist. So that's the gist of getting started. Creating a playlist is very easy. You just choose the right template called playlist, add your files, and pretty much you're done. But just to show you a little bit more under the covers, you'll notice here this is the view playlist. So it's really a view that's showing me here, or one of the views. If I go to all items, you'll see there's a little bit more of who uploaded it, the thumbnail that was generated or was already there in the file itself because Stream generates a thumbnail. And if I go into this, you'll see just like any other list, this is a list item. And if I want to go in here and adjust this so that the title is a little bit cleaner, I can go in here and adjust the auto title based on the name of the uh, file so that it's a little bit cleaner. Save that down if you'll notice it changes it here. And more importantly, when I go back into the playlist view, it's a little bit cleaner for the person that I'm going to send it to. So I would do that for all of these, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to jump to another playlist that I had created just to show you one that's a little bit more cleaned up and, of course, a couple other things that I wanted to highlight. So these are all of the keynote sessions from the European SharePoint Conference 2022. And you can see the default name here was that what I named the file. And actually, these are mostly are all audio files that I've added a thumbnail to. And the way that they then show is looks like a video, plays like a video, but is really just giving me the ability to go to these different chapters with a graphic that I chose. And so this just highlights a little bit of a cleaner playlist, but also one where I've used audio files with their own thumbnails. And this is what it looks like to jump around to the different uh, topics uh, and the different chapters. If I wanted to go to another uh, video file that's in this playlist, it automatically starts playing. I can jump into the chapters and I can see, oh, it doesn't look like Scott talks until this time. So when I click on it, hey friends, I, uh, I may or may not have forgotten how to do this. It has been a few years. So if you'll bear with me, I may be a little bit rusty. So that was a great talk by Scott. And in essence, this was the easiest way for me to put this collection of audio files. They could have been video files or a mixture of them and then share it out with other people who would be interested. So this has that full functionality of the stream player. Uh, you can see you know, a number of different things to set the settings because I'm the owner of the file. This is the thumbnail that I chose for Scott's talk. These are the chapters that I created because I turned chapters on and then created them. But it plums through now that file anytime it appears really throughout Microsoft 365 but especially in play, uh, the playlists, I get this nice full fidelity of the playback experience. Again, if I go from a playback view to an all items view, you get the simple list of what it looks like. But you can now see that I added one thing, which is the tip that I wanted to share. If you go into add a column and just choose it as a text column or a number column, whichever, uh, and then you just call it something like order. This is a hidden field effectively to the playlist view. But for you, you can then reorder it. Uh, right now, it will only appear in the order that you uh, upload them. So the Microsoft AMA file here it was the first one that I uploaded. But I wanted to then reorient, so it was the last one to play. So I just added an, what I called an order column. And then I chose to create the view that you see here, all items, to view from 1 to 5. And I could have moved the numbers around and just gone into the order. I do it from smaller to larger so that I get the right order. But you get the gist. If you add a column that you can then put in a number order, and if I wanted this order to change, I could change maybe the Microsoft AMI and the developer keynote. And I'll do that so you can see. I'll change this one to 4. And then I'll change this one to 5. And if our demo gods are with us today, I go and refresh this page. 
our AMA is now bumped up and within our playlist view you can see what was the last item is now the fourth item. So it's pretty easy. It is something that we've gotten as feedback to be able to reorder them in some fashion. And that's my tip just to go into the all items, add a column, title it whatever you want. I just titled it order and then use numbers and just make sure you choose the smaller to larger or whatever makes sense for how you want to order it. And then that'll reflect how it looks in this all items view, but it also supports then when you go back to playlist view, the order that then they are in. So if I were to share this with somebody, they don't know anything about that ordering. Uh, they just know that they've got a nice offering to watch all of the keynotes from the European SharePoint conference. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you was if I went over to stream and you can get there by going into the app launcher and clicking on stream, you can type in stream office.com and it'll effectively get you to what you're looking at here which is my stream homepage and from here similar to where we started with the Microsoft 365 app if I go into this drop down and instead of clicking new recording you'll see now playlists in lists and this saves me even one click compared to where I started last time because it assumes that I'm using the playlist template and just goes right into the part of asking me to create a playlist name. And I'll just create playlist foo. I can still choose where I want it to be. I'm going to also put this one in the intro zone. But if you notice, it's a little bit of a quicker time to market, a little bit fewer, fewer clicks. I know which template that you're looking to use. It's playlist. So let's just jump you into using it. So if I click create, this should look familiar now that you've already seen it gets me right back to where I would start by uploading my videos or my audio files. And that's it. That's playlists within Microsoft 365 using the power of Microsoft Lists plus Stream on SharePoint with the value of giving you a great creation experience and I think even more important, a great playback experience when you share your audio and video files in a collection of however you organize them.